Hi, this is Anjana and welcome to the Tech Girl channel. Do you own a Mac Mini, Mac Studio or any Mac? Then you might know that Apple provides a measly 256 or 512 GB base storage only, which is just sufficient for the OS files and some documents. If you do some intense work like video editing, photo editing, you will need more storage without a doubt. But Apple will ask you to pay sometimes over $1000 for increasing your Mac storage. That's a lot of money. Instead, in this video, I will give you three high speed storage solution for your Mac each better than the first. In fact, for less than 50% the price, you can get the storage for your Mac which is two times faster than what Apple offers you. This is the speed I'm getting on the internal Mac storage and this is the speed I'm getting from my expanded storage for half the price. It's gonna be a very useful video so let's get started. All the new Apple Silicon Macs which include Mac Mini, MacBooks and Mac Studio comes with a soldered SSD storage on the internal board itself which means you cannot swap out the internal SSD for a larger SSD if you run out of space. And since Apple's storage options are absurdly expensive, you will need to expand your storage through other options. I will present here three solutions for a fast and cheaper storage option than what Apple gives you. Just an heads up, I'm not considering the HDD options which you can get for around $100 for an insane 5 TB. These are extremely slow and are mainly used for backup purposes. You cannot work directly off of these hard drives. All the options I'm proposing here are SSD options which gives you high speed read and write which is essential for working on files which are directly on the SSD. In fact, I edit my 4K video footage on the Final Cut Pro on my SSD without any issue. Okay, the first option which is an easy and cheap option getting an external SSD like the SanDisk Extreme Pro or Samsung T7. They will cost around $120 for a terabyte. It's a good option for someone who will need decent speeds like 500 or 600 MPS. Photo editing, illustration, all are possible with these SSDs. It's plug and play, no DIY, easy to work with solution. To give some perspective, Apple charges you $400 for a terabyte. Well, you might ask, this is not as fast as the internal SSD, right? That's where the next option comes. Keep in mind, this is slightly DIY solution, but completely worth it. Instead of buying an external SSD, you're gonna build it yourself. For this, you will need an enclosure or a case and then bare SSD itself. In my case, my Mac mini internal storage is offering around around 2700 Mbps. To get speeds close to what my Mac Mini is offering, you will need to get an enclosure and an SSD which will be faster than that. I've got here a Thunderbolt M.2 NVMe enclosure which is capable of handling 40 gigs per second or roughly 4000 megabytes per second. The SSD I've got here is from Western Digital. This is a 2 TB SSD and can handle up to 7300 megabytes per second. You don't need 7300 megabytes per second because your enclosure will not be able to handle them anyway. But I got I got it for the same price as a slower SSD version in a deal, so I got this one. You can get any SSD and enclosure to match your requirements, but get an M.2 NVMe SSD and enclosure for best speeds. I'll leave a link to everything in the description down below. Now just open the enclosure, insert the SSD and put the enclosure back again. Plug the enclosure into a Thunderbolt port on your Mac and initialize the disk like this in the Disk Utility app. Now the SSD is ready to use. Let's test the speeds, shall we? I'm getting close to 20. 800 megabytes per second write and over 2800 megabytes per second read. This is in fact faster than my internal Mac mini SSD. I can directly edit my large video files on this SSD and I have never noticed dropped frames or slowness. It's extremely fast and cheaper as well. How cheap? This setup cost me $230 for both the enclosure and the SSD for 2 terabytes. A 2 terabyte upgrade with Apple on internal SSD will cost you close to $600. In my opinion, I would recommend many people to go with this solution. Rarely people will need more than 2700 megabyte speeds and in terms of cost as well, this gives you more storage and speed per dollar. Okay, now for the final option. This is for people who need even faster speeds and who are ready to spend slightly more. How fast? This is Mac internal SSD speeds. This is the DIY NVMe speeds and this is from the third option. This is exactly two times faster than the internal SSD. So how do you get this? This is exactly the same as the DIY NVMe SSD. Confused? Instead of one SSD with enclosure, you will need two of them, which means two enclosure, two SSDs. Install them the same way as before and plug both of them into your Mac's Thunderbolt port. The trick? It's all in the software. We are going to combine the two 
SSDs into one using RAID. I won't go much into what RAID is, but basically you're asking your Mac to split the read and writes between the two disks equally, which view both the SSDs as one large disk. The advantage of doing this way, since the read and writes are parallel, you get two times the speed. To do this, connect both the NVMe SSDs to your Mac, go to Disk Utility Program and select RAID Assistant here. Now create a RAID 0 configuration. Give it a name, select the disks you want to use it for this RAID configuration and that's it. I had two 2 terabyte disks which is now showing as one 4 terabyte disks. If I perform a speed test on this new disk, I'm getting over 5200 megabytes per second of writes and 4700 megabytes per second of read. This is good enough even to edit 8K video footage easily. Here I used two 2 terabyte SSD from Western Digital for a total of 4 TB storage. Instead, you can use two 1 terabyte SSD for a 2 terabyte storage and you will get the exact same 2x speeds. This RAID trick will work with the slower external SSDs we saw first as well, which means instead of getting a 2 terabyte SSD, you can get 1 terabyte SSD and easily get double the speeds. Just keep one thing in mind, get both the SSDs of the same size. If you have different sized SSDs, the RAID will be created using the smaller size of the two. How much did it cost for me? Two enclosures, two SSDs, all cost $480 in total. This is for a 4 terabyte setup. It's not cheap by any means, but if you want to get the same 4 TB setup from Apple, it will cost you close to $1200, but at half the speed. It will cost you less for a 2 TB setup. The good thing is you get to pick and choose how you want your setup to be. Again, my overall recommendation for anyone looking to expand their Mac storage would be to go with the option 2, which is a single NVMe SSD with an enclosure. It's a plug and play solution, gives speed equal to your internal SSD and gives the most speed and storage per dollar spent. Irrespective of whatever option you pick, just don't waste money on Apple storage which are exorbitantly priced. I will leave links to all the products I mentioned in the description below for you to check it out. I hope this video was useful to you. If yes, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos in the description. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye-bye.